Hello and welcome to another segment by Freeman CPA, Atlanta Business Accountants. My name is Greg Freeman. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about entity types. All right, obviously everybody knows that once you go into business, you want to form an entity. And I'm going to discuss the different types of entities that you can choose from. Now, if you just want to do uh, doing business as and you want to be a sole proprietor with no formal entity behind yourself, you can do that. You can go into business and just do business as yourself. You don't need anything special. You can obtain a tax ID, uh, biz uh, doing business as, in other words, you can call it something interesting like uh, Greg does taxes or something like that. And it's not like a legal entity and it won't have any kind of special tax ramifications or any kind of legal protection or anything like that. But if you're starting a business and you're scratching your head about which type of entity is best for you, we have a lot of great detailed segments um, that will cover that in way more mechanical and detailed outline. This is just the top side um, presentation where I just want to quickly, briefly give you an executive summary about what your choices are. Okay, so um, if you're trying to start out a new business and you're going to basically choose between an LLC or a corporation those are your two main options okay an LLC as I've discussed before is a one-size-fits-all type of entity and it keeps things very simple at the same time it offers that legal protection that everybody seeks out when they start business and it looks more professional you have that LLC um, name at the end of your business so if it's Greg's taxes, LLC, um, comma, LLC, that's basically what that would look like. As far as the taxation, it'll keep things simple and it gives you a lot of flexibility going forward. You can convert that LLC to an S corp. You can convert that LLC to a C corp and then it can be converted back to an LLC or maybe even go and become a partnership. It really depends. And there's a lot of different technical um, variability that comes with this LLC because depending on how you elect for it to be taxed will obviously determine what type of taxation it will have to face. So if you're just going to want to keep things simple and it's just you and you have this LLC, it will be taxed as what we call a single member LLC or a disregarded entity for tax purposes. Now, what does that mean? A disregarded entity for tax purposes really means that there's very little distinction between like if I was to go into business as a sole proprietor without any LLC and having that LLC. So it would basically be like almost no different for tax purposes except the LLC name and the legal protection that it's offering. So if I just do business as a sole proprietor, it'll be taxed exactly the same way as if I have an LLC because technically nothing's really changed. Do you need to keep formalities in check? Yes, of course. If you have an LLC, you still want to conduct everything in a business-like manner. You should have business cards, business bank account, um, you know, letterhead should be on uh, business letterhead. And, um, you know, obviously if people are cutting you checks and you're getting 1099s, it should be coming not to your name, but to the name of the LLC. And all of these different things are going to um, basically help you keep things um, tax proof and or rather audit proof for tax purposes, but also for legal purposes, it's a good idea to keep things very strict and very businesslike with a lot of formalities. So that way the LLC structure could never be challenged even for legal purposes. And that obviously includes commingling of funds and things of that nature. So if you're, if you're getting into business and you're opening up an LLC um, and you're getting a bank account for that LLC, you don't want to start spending personally out of it. You still have to do things very much in a business-like manner. Now, if you're getting a corporation, okay, so that's already a whole different ballgame. There's a lot more formalities that come into play, whether that's a C-Corp or an S-Corp. Um, all, all corporations, basically, if we're not discussing an LLC that can be taxed as an S-Corp or C-Corp, and you're forming an, a corporation right out of the gate, they all start as C-Corporations, okay? And a C corporation is really one of the worst forms of doing business currently under current tax laws. Um, and so we 
we don't see that very often, but um, it does happen for business purposes. And again, we've discussed a lot more detail in other videos, and I'm gonna link them down below. But a C corporation will basically face double taxation, all right, in, in a nutshell. So you, you don't want to, it'll just end up costing the business more money in taxation, hypothetically, um, than would an S corp. And it's a standalone company. It just basically, it's not tied into the owners in any which way besides the actual stock that you own in that C corporation. So it's not connected to you in any which way. It's a separate entity and it doesn't do anything that ties into you personally kind of like with the llc all right so um but again let's just backtrack a little bit so the c corporation is the worst form of doing business for tax purposes it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the worst form of doing business for legal purposes it might have um, a lot of legal um, benefits that might offer better protection than other types of businesses and it also has um, basically more uh, specifically might have business reasons to go into um, that route as opposed to other routes because um, you know there's limitations on what you could do with LLCs and S corporations and things like that like for example um, you know C corporations can be owned by foreigners where S corporations cannot so if somebody's um, out of the country and trying to start up a business in the US and S corporation is just not an option for them because they would need to be um, basically a US citizen or resident to own a stock in an S corporation. So that's why um, there's, again, <clears throat> specific legal reasons, there are specific um, tax reasons or even business reasons why somebody might want to choose the C corp route as opposed to um, you know, doing some other form of um, entity type. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Yeah, so that's the C corporation. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of details. I just want you to understand like the the basic rudimentary um, things that come up as people are deciding to choose which entity type. And obviously our role as the tax professional is to help guide and explain what's very common and what's best to do in certain situations. But most people do also consult with an attorney or somebody of that nature that can help guide them from the legal standpoint as well. Um, we're there more for the tax standpoint and more for the business standpoint and obviously pointing the person in the right direction. Now, um, so that's the C corporation. Then we have the S corporation. So um, all corporations are born as C corporations. In other words, when you form them, they're all going to be first as a C corporation and then we can elect to convert it and be taxed as an S corporation. Okay, so there's no real other way to go about it. So if you're coming right out of the gate and you're forming a corporation, it's gonna automatically by default be a C corporation and then for tax purposes, you make a special election and you will now be taxed as an S corporation. So what is an S corporation? So the S corporation is just a subchapter in the Internal Revenue Code. It doesn't stand for small business, although most people might think it does. In singles with the C corporations, it's just a subchapter in the Internal Revenue Code. Um, and so for S corporations, they're what are considered pass through entities. So an LLC and the S corporation have a lot in common because they're both deemed pass through entities. So what, what is a pass through entity? So in other words, a partnership or an S corporation, they don't actually pay taxes. Now, when, when you were discussing C corporations, and I said that the C corporation gets a double tax and all this other stuff, I'm not gonna go into the mechanics of it, but just know that um, the taxation happens on the C corp level and it stays there. And any dividends that pass through to the owners as distributions on a C corporation still end up being taxed again as dividends okay so that's where the double tax comes from now with s corporations and partnerships or llc's there's no such mechanics it's a pass-through entity so it doesn't actually pay any taxes on its own even though we're filing an s corporation return separately it's an informational filing same thing with a partnership a partnership um, needs to have a separate filing done from the individuals but the actual partnership or the s corporation are not paying any kind of income taxes and all we're doing is filing a corporate or a partnership return with the IRS separately from the owners and then whatever that activity um, 
whatever happens with that activity just basically passes through to the owners where the owners pick up that information and end up paying um, taxes and everything on whatever happened on that S Corp or whatever happened on that LLC on a personal level. So every the playing field is the shareholder or the individual or the partner. That's where everything happens. That's where everything passes through and the individuals pick all that up on their individual returns and everything plays out on an individual level. All right, um, again, and we've went into a lot of detail with um, what are the differences and everything. So I wanna keep it as short as possible. Just know that um, every single entity type will be somehow different in the mechanics and the taxation. So if you're starting out as an LLC or sole proprietor, um, you will be taxed one way. All your profits are gonna be subject to self-employment taxes and you're gonna see much more taxes happen in your whole scenario than possibly as an S corporate. In S corporation, everybody knows that um, you regulate your salary so you can m minimize the amount of self-employment taxes you're paying through um, salary regulation, okay? But it's not that straightforward. Obviously, you have to run a reasonable compensation. And again, I have many videos on this topic, so I'm not gonna dwell into it, but um, just keep in mind that the S corporation works completely differently in many respects currently than an LLC, which is a single member LLC or LLC that's taxed as a partnership. It just works differently. And so does the C corporation. The C corporation works completely different. Now, the, again, the key differences are that the S corporation and the LLCs are basically, if that LLC is taxed as an S corp or as a partnership or as a single member LLC, they're all passed through. They're all going to be playing out on um, an individual level. Unless you take that LLC and elect to have it taxed as a C corporation, that would be the only um, distinction there, right? Because we can start off as an LLC and then convert it to a C corp for tax purposes. Why, I don't know, but you can technically do that. Um, but then you'd be asking yourself, why wouldn't I just start a C corporation? Why would I have to go around like this? And the answer really is legal reasons, okay? Um, or maybe, different state rules or um, all sorts, th there's many reasons, right? Because remember, the LLC is very uh, one size fits all, so it can um, convert to different types of entities. It's very confusing. There's, there's a lot to know. Um, again, the best thing to do is to get with a great tax accountant that understands the, um, the little intricacies that come with entity type formation and um, how it specifically applies to you and what's the best structure, you know, because some businesses just should be in an LLC. There is just like, for example, rental real estate. If you're about to go into the rental real estate business, do not put your rental real estate property into a C Corp. Do not do that. Do not put it into an S Corp. It's just bad for um, tax purposes. It's just not done that way. Can it be done? Yes, but under very limited circumstances, does it actually make sense? Um, if you do it any other way, which is 99% of the time, it'll just end up costing you more money and becoming like a tax issue where it shouldn't be because um, rental real estate should always go into an LLC for tax purposes 99% of the time. All right, um, that's why you should definitely have guidance um, Look at a lot of our videos. We, I'm gonna put a bunch of videos here onto uh, this description and you can take a closer look at some of the content and see if you um, find anything that's interesting that might apply to you. We're trying to cover a lot of broad basis. Taxation is highly complex and there's a lot to know. All right, guys. So again, just to summarize, you know, you have different options and depending on not only um, what you're looking to do Right. So not only the business standpoint, but what kind of industry you're in might make a very big difference as to where you should land. So don't just go out there and immediately get an LLC. You have to talk to somebody that understands the intricacies of these different types of entities, how it plays out on the individual level. What is your goals for the next five years? What industry you're in? There's a lot of different um, considerations that you should um, first basically analyze before you make any decisions. So don't be rash, don't go out there and just, you know, my friend, my neighbor got an LLC for their business, I'm gonna do the same thing. 
it might completely not suit you because of your situation, your personal tax situation, your outlook, and the industry and everything else. So, um, right, that, that's pretty much it. That's, that's all I want to say, guys. Again, um, if you like the content, please, guys, like and subscribe. Shoot us uh, a note, a message, anything. If, you, if there's something out there that interests you and you'd like to see a presentation um, on a certain topic, we'd love to hear about it. We are always um, have our ears perked up and are willing to listen. Um, we love bringing great original content to you and helping you guys, basically empowering um, everybody out there to just know more, to learn more about taxation. Taxation is very complex. It's really important that people um, wrap their mind around it as much as they can because it's just going to make everything much simpler for everybody involved. All right, guys, Greg Freeman um, signing off today. Um, thanking you for uh, participating and watching our videos and wishing you a great day. Remember, here at Freeman CPA, our motto is your success is our success all day, every day. Thanks for watching again. Take care.